today we are going to do MATLAB. Now that should work. Why isn't it working? Good. MATLAB in particular we will do Newton Raphson method. We will do ODE solution and we will do systems of linear equations which is AX equals B. Let's start with this first. So here what we are doing is X is actually a column matrix of variables X1, X2, Xn for some finite number n. And F of X is similarly a column matrix F1, F2 up to Fn where each of these elements is dependent on X. We want to find x such that f of x equals 0. As you can easily imagine, this is a very general and useful problem. And one way to do this numerically by trial and error is an iterative method called the Newton Raphson method. How does the Newton Raphson method work? So how it works is like this. You may have seen the 1D version but Bhaskar has shown you, Professor Dasgupta has shown you the multidimensional version but I will go over it again just to make sure that we are all talking about the same thing. So now here I will use uh, blue. What we have is we will assume that at some point you have some xk. By this k I don't mean the kth element, I mean kth iterate. kth guess, not kth element. So we want to find a good x k plus 1. Our idea is that x k plus 1 is equal to x k plus delta x. f of x k plus delta x is f of x, sorry, x k plus a matrix of partial derivatives times delta x plus something that is quadratic which we neglect. Therefore, we neglect this and we set this part equal to 0 that means we are getting a good iterate here we are setting that equal to 0 which means delta x is equal to minus d inverse f of x k. So if we can find this matrix of partial derivatives even numerically if it is even numerically evaluated there is no problem what we will get is our iteration is x k plus 1 is equal to x k minus d inverse f of x k. This is the Newton Raphson iteration. Now 
Now, although you may have seen this, um, the way MATLAB works is it works with functions. There are script files and function files. I recommend function files. You will be tempted to use script files. My suggestion is don't use script files and use function files. You will see what the difference is very soon. Now, let's see here. This is good enough. So, the function f is a box. I have to write a program which is this box to which when I give it x it gives me f of x. Then the name of this goes to the Newton Raphson solver and then what it does is it keeps sending some x value keeps getting an f value uses that to adjust the x until it gets a sufficiently small value f of x and then it tells you this is the solution of course it may not converge in which in that case you have to try again with a better initial guess if you are close to the correct solution then it will converge rapidly with this introduction, let us go to MATLAB. Here is the MATLAB window open. Um, it has this sort of new M file, open an existing M file, save, all of these things you have to learn. If you don't have MATLAB, then you try to get access to it. There is uh, The institute may give you access if you log in. It may be possible to get it online. Otherwise, um, you may get what we sometimes refer to as unofficial versions but uh, finally there is always octave octave o c t a v e it is freeware it runs many of the programs that are there good for matlab okay so here is the newton raphson file okay so the newton raphson file let me show you this is a file that i will email to you you would have received it in email perhaps by the time you see this or soon after this file is a function file. The name of the function is Newton. It will receive a string which is called f name and it will receive a guess x. And what it will do over here is it will do the whole iteration many, many times, you know. And then if it gets an answer, it will return that answer. And if um, it has not converged, then it will return infinity. So you'll know that it's not a useful answer. What is it doing here? is this is f eval is a built-in MATLAB command it takes the function file and says evaluate that function for input x okay and n is the number of elements in x it sets the count you know it remains count should remain less than 60 that means it will not iterate endlessly and it will iterate while the count is less than 60 and the norm of f0 that is the magnitude in the sum, square root of the sum of the squares of the elements of that is greater than some small number that you specify you can change this number to 10 to the power minus 11 minus 12 also but i recommend that you don't make it very tight because all we have is about 16 places of decimals this number here 10 to the minus 5 is for finite difference derivatives this i n remember n is the number of lengths e y is a matlab command its identity matrix it gets multiplied so each column is a perturbation that gives you the matrix of partial derivatives i recommend that you spend some time thinking about this program what we are doing here is you see e is the matrix of perturbations so every time we find a new perturbed value because we are perturbing it by the first column then the second column then the third column in this loop and each time we get a perturbed value we subtract the unperturbed value then we divide by the finite difference being used and that is an approximation for the finite difference derivative matrix then here is the iteration you see this is the k plus one this is the k this is d backslash means inverse as far as you are concerned and f0 is the current value the moment you get a new value of x f0 is reset to the current value and count is incremented this is it newton raphson very powerful very very useful okay so let us take 
for example even a built-in function so let us say Newton and let us this is not even a function we have written it's a built-in function and we know there is an answer near pi at pi but we will give this as initial guess um, now why is that this should be in this directory um, but it is not all right file save as and it is in the wrong directory I see um, here 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 save all right so now it is saved in the correct directory and you see it has given me this answer you can see four decimal places but you can see more if you want so you can do format long and then when you see the answer you see it is still many places if we look at pi which is a built-in number you will see six five three two nine so this is how much we wanted our uh, answer how many decimal places and so that's how many are correct if we tighten this number here this number if I make it 10 to the minus 2 then I expect that I will get um, a more accurate answer you see so it matches 9793 now in fact everything matches okay what we can do something else we can do um, cosine we know that there is an answer close to 1.5 pi by 2 so if you look at pi by 2 you will see that it is matching 26794 26794 this part is not matching so it matches still many many digits and this is how we can um, solve it you are saying that you are probably saying that this is a scalar function and you're right and so now we will um, take a new uh, function which for which we will need a couple of equations so let's come back here our test equation so let us say test problem okay x square plus y square is equal to 1 and x plus y equal to 0 okay so now graphically we know x square plus y square equals 1 is a circle of unit radius x plus y equals 0 that means y is minus x so that is another straight line we know there are two roots here and here in this case we happen to understand this equation which is fine now we will come back to MATLAB and we will write this function let us say y this y should not confuse you so let me say z is equal to test and x is a generic variable now what I will do is I will say y is equal to x2 and x is equal to x1 okay then I will say z and the first one is x square plus y square minus 1 that needs to be 0 semicolon sends it to the next row x plus y this semicolon suppresses output otherwise you will be getting output you need to learn how to use MATLAB alright this function is now ready I will save this it wants to save it as test which I think is ok let us see if it doesn't complain that should be fine now if I come in here and I say Newton test and I just give it an initial guess of 3 it should complain because it wants two elements and it won't have any and it complains okay but if I come here and I give it let us say I know that there is a solution something like 0 0.7 0 0.7 0 0.7 0 0.7 I know there is a solution there when I do this well it didn't converge oh that's because one is positive and one is negative so that will converge you see so that is 1 over square root of 2 in this way I can solve um, systems of equations now why is this important for our kinematics class Bhaskar has done this but we will just sort of quickly revise and so we will now come here and we will now try to solve this problem here so we will say here is a 4 bar linkage linkage 
with a coupler point P over here that we are interested in. We will take this to be the origin. This here is the origin. But we will also call it O2. We will call this O4. This is link 1 here, 1 here. I will put quotation marks around the origin just to make sure that you understand what's going on. This is 2, this is 3, this is 4. These are the links, but now I will show dimensions. Okay, so let's say this dimension is 8, and let us say this dimension is maybe 5. I'm putting the dimension in circles. I hope you don't mind. That's maybe not the best way to do it, but that's okay. This is 5. Now let us say this is 5.2, this part here from here to here. And then this is an additional 4. And since this is 5, maybe we will say this is 6. Okay, so now we have a problem statement. This is our input link. I will show this in blue. I will say input link. I will say this angle is 63 degrees at some instant of time. I want to know how much is this angle. So this is theta 2. This angle is theta 3. This angle is theta 4. As we know, given theta 2, find theta 3 and theta 4. Alright, so now let us say this length is L1, this length is L2, this length is L3. This length here all right, so the dimensions are known, and our equations in complex notation. Once again, let me emphasize with red here given theta 2, we are trying to find theta 3 and theta 4. We are trying to find P, etc. We want to know where the coupler point is and so on. Okay. So now we come here, we are going to write our complex equations. Our complex equation is L. Let me do that with green, maybe a bit better. Okay. So L1 plus L4 e to the power i theta 4. I need to move this a bit here. Is equal to L2 e to the power i theta 2 plus L3 e to the power i theta 3. But I will subtract this thing and then write that as equal to 0. Okay, So that is my equation, right? This is my equation. I actually, this is equivalent to vector equation. That's the first thing to note. It is also a loop equation which helps you Remember that loop equations are used in this approach, this particular analytical approach that we are going to turn into a numerical approach. And the final equation looks like this, L1 plus L4 e to the power i theta 4 minus L2 
टू ई टू द पावर आई थीटा टू माइनस एल थ्री ई टू द पावर आई थीटा थ्री इक्वल्स जीरो नाउ दिस लेफ्ट हैंड साइड विच आई एम गोइंग टू पुट इन अ रेड बॉक्स हेयर इज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स क्वांटिटी एंड सो इट एक्चुअली हैज अ रियल पार्ट एंड एन इमेजिनरी पार्ट and that has to be zero and that has to be zero and we can do that with cosines and so on but if cosines and sines but if we are going to be using matlab anyway then it doesn't matter we'll just numerically take the real part is that all right so let us go there now l1 l2 um let me see l2 is 5 um l4 is 6 l3 is 5.2 l1 is 8 very good let's go to matlab here and let me change this to thetas okay now i will say theta 2 is equal to we have said 63 degrees so it is 63 divided by 180 times pi because in scientific work we always use radians okay now we will say theta 3 is equal to theta's 1 theta 4 is equal to theta's 2 we will say l1 is equal to 8 l2 is equal to 5 L three is equal to five point two. L four is equal to six. All right. So this is our uh, now our loop closure equation is Z is equal to L one plus L four times e x p i times theta four. Now here is something extremely important. See in you can't use i in any other variable the default value of i in matlab is the square root of minus 1 but over here if you say i is equal to the square root of 2 then it will forget imaginary i and i will become the square root of 2 and then this equation will be wrong so in the variables you define over here you cannot define anything to be i you must let it remain the default value okay so minus l2 times e x p i times theta 2 minus l3 times e x p i times theta 3 okay this is z but it's a complex quantity now what i will do is i will say z is the real part of z and the imaginary part of z now i have two equations this is what i have to solve and what i will get is theta 3 and theta 4 with luck so i've saved it again if i have not made any mistakes it should be all right let's come back here and make a rough guess so i am guessing from this drawing that this may be something like 15 degrees and this may be something like 100 degrees i'm guessing what we will put that guess over here and see what happens okay so we will say newton test see now test means a different function i have saved it it's a different function test initial condition theta 3 and theta 4 15 30 is pi by 6 so 15 is pi by 12 right and the other one is um 100 degrees is 100 by 180 times pi that's my initial guess and you see this is the answer okay now in fact how do they work out we can see x equals answer then i will say degrees is equal to x times 180 by pi um and one is about 16.7 degrees and one is about 100 degrees my guesses were not very far off but even if they were a little bit off it would work so i've got theta 3 and theta 4 in radians you see so now i know these numbers in this way i have solved for the configuration using newton raphson it is not difficult now i come here there is another solution so i will draw that in red the same red so the other solution is the one as has been pointed out in previous lectures 
by Professor Dasgupta and possibly by me, but I'm not sure, but definitely he has done it. So over here you see, this is the reflected arrangement. So now theta 4 is more than pi. So let us say theta 4 is equal to 3.3 or theta 4 is equal to minus 3. So it's going the other way, negative. Both are acceptable. Both are acceptable. Okay, and then what about this one? This one is probably about minus 80 degrees. Okay, so we will say minus minus 1.45 or something. Okay, we will try that. Okay, so we can try that theta for minus 1.45 and minus 3. And you see when we do that, minus 1.45 minus 3. Well, minus 1.6 and minus 3, those are, those are the answers. That is the other one. Now, we know from our physical insight into the problem that there are no other solutions. Why are there no other solutions? Because of the problem statement. Let me take a slightly fatter pen so that we don't get confused. Let me remind you, this part fixed, this part fixed this length fixed, this length fixed. So from here you draw one arc, from here you draw another arc, and it basically cuts in two places. That is why there are two solutions. That's all there is. There cannot be any other solution. Okay? But when I come here to newton raphson suppose I give it completely random initial conditions. So I say rand n 2 1 divided by rand n 2, 1. Okay, so fully random initial condition. It bounces around for a while. It converges to an answer that I already had. Okay, need not. Let's try again. See, this time it looks different. Okay, so let me say x equals answer. But is it different? Well, the point is, if something is less than 0, and to make it look like this, I can add 2 pi every time. So I will say x is equal to this is the part where I want you to pay attention. x less than 0, that is a binary number, times 2 times pi plus x. So if I do this, 2 pi should be added to this, and this part should not be changed. Let us see if that happens. See, it happened. And I do that, and it happened again, and I am back to 292, which was the answer. 292.188.244.292. 188244. Now similarly from here I can subtract 2 pi. In fact if it is more than pi then I can subtract 2 pi. So if I say x is equal to x greater than pi into 2 into pi, this is what I want to subtract. And you see now I have 1.696, 1989, Here's the answer, 1.61989. Okay? So those are the answers. There aren't any other answers. And in this way, I am able to um, find the configuration. Once I have theta 3 and theta 4, I can go back here. Sorry for the mess, but I know theta 3. I know this point because I know theta 2. From here, I know theta 3. So I can extend that line and I can find the location of the coupler point. Okay? Now let's do a velocity problem. So now we are doing a velocity problem. We have to come here and our, I have to go back to a thinner pen. And I'll go back to yellow color. And we will do a velocity analysis, slightly fatter pen. Okay, so for velocity, analysis theta 2 theta 3 theta 4 are known so the position analysis is already done then theta 2 dot is known and then we proceed okay 
So we come here, our loop equation is L1 plus L4 e to the power i theta 4 minus L2 e to the power i theta 2 minus L3 e to the power i theta 3 is equal to 0. This equation is valid at all instants of time, you see. So these these are functions of time. Nevertheless, this equation is always true. Because it is always true, we can differentiate it. And when we differentiate it, we get the following. We get i l4 e to the power i theta 4 theta 4 dot minus i l2 e to the power i theta 2 theta 2 dot minus i l3 e to the power i theta 3 theta 3 dot is equal to 0. You really need to pay attention to this equation a little to see how easy it is to solve this system with MATLAB. We have beautiful graphical methods and normally I am a fan of them, but it is also important to just, just know one way of doing it which always works. Okay? So here is the thing, I am going to use red now to circle the parts. You know theta 4, so this is just a complex number. You know theta 2, so this is just a complex number. The, the minus also doesn't matter. You know theta 3, so this is just a complex number. And therefore, I am going to write this equation in a more abstract form as a theta 4 dot plus b theta 3 dot plus c I'm sorry equals c theta 2 dot. That is because theta 2 dot is known. Okay? All right. This is a complex equation. However, the interesting part is that this is real, this is real, and this is real. Okay? Therefore, in fact, we have these equations. We have the real part of A the real part of B let me scroll this down a bit the imaginary part of A and the imaginary part of B times theta 4 dot theta 3 dot is equal to the real part of C, the imaginary part of C times theta 2 dot. And this now is a completely real system. What is more interesting is that I can construct a temporary matrix Z A comma B and then I can say Z again or Z1 if you like is real sorry sorry not capital R in MATLAB I should say R E A L Z semicolon I M A G Z okay and then what it will happen is that it will just deal with all the matrix sizes and give me this matrix. So that is Z1. This is my vector of unknowns. Let me temporarily call it Y. This evaluated thing again is whatever I had here. I can put real part, imaginary part. I will let you do this. And then I get a system that looks like Z1 Y is equal to little b. And I have to solve for y and so I say y is equal to z1 backslash b. 
so in this part in the velocity part newton raphson is also not needed these are linear equations now okay let's come back here suppose i am doing acceleration analysis no problem okay so i come here i'm doing acceleration analysis this equation i'll differentiate so i'll get a dot see over here i'll take this derivative so i'll get another i over here it will be negative another theta 4 dot will come here so that will be something and then this will be whatever it is and this will be theta 4 double dot okay then i'll come here there'll be the derivative of this part which will introduce a theta dot over there and make it theta 2 dot square uh, sorry theta 2 dot square right so for the acceleration analysis let me come here for velocity analysis this is known for the acceleration analysis theta 2 double dot also known right and over here theta 3 dot theta 4 dot found theta 2 double dot may be 0 if it is being rotated at a constant velocity but otherwise if it is given whatever it is given okay so once we have that then uh, we come back here we take derivatives over here this is iit i think you should be able to do this we will take derivatives over here and what will happen is we will get things that look like this we will get something times theta 4 dot square plus something times theta 4 double dot plus something times theta 3 dot square plus something times theta 3 double dot plus something sorry equals plus something times theta 2 dot square plus something theta 2 double dot and then what we do here is we come here this part this part this part they are all known we take this over to the left hand side we just collect it we call it b or something I bring it over to the right hand side it doesn't matter i'm sorry right hand side this part is known so that is combined with this is combined this 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 and this are combined to give some complex quantity b which in this example is a scalar no problem but complex okay and then here and here are two complex things i have already used a b so now let me use um, p q so i'll have p theta 4 double dot plus q theta 3 double dot is equal to b this b has the theta 2 double dot information which is specified because we know how we are turning the crank and it has these other Coriolis and other you know centrifugal type terms in there so they are uh, included and then this part here this is complex this is complex this is complex but this part is real here this part is real here and so once again what we will do is we will split it into real and imaginary parts just like here and then we will be able to solve these equations okay so with this i stop this video this is how elementary um, calculations in matlab using the newton raphson method followed by matrix algebra they can be done and i expect you to be able to do this because this is from the first part of the course but i am showing you how to do this so that we are on the same page thank you